All right, here we go. All right, here we go. This is a game I've been playing now for uh, months. Actually, I started working on the chromatic harmonica and learning jazz music theory when the pandemic hit, and I kind of wandered through a bunch of different ideas on what to practice. And I stumbled across a YouTube video where somebody was playing some tapes of Charlie Parker warming up in a hotel room. I'm sorry, but I don't know where that is, and I haven't looked it up since. But one of the things that he did was he practiced major scales by playing them top to bottom in chromatic order, one right after another. And of course, he was awesome at doing that. So I said to myself, that's a great goal for me to, to go for and I have been working at it now uh, daily for over, well, I don't know how long I've been doing this particular exercises, but I have been playing uh, the 12 uh, major scales on the chromatic now for well over a year, probably a year and a half. And the reason why is because it seems to be the ground floor for being able to work jazz music theory on a musical instrument. Now, this path would probably be easier in a guitar because you can learn one pattern and get by just simply moving your hands and doing the same fingering pattern, you can get chromatic steps. Um, the, the chromatic harmonica, each scale is a different pattern. Plus, there are variations that you can do because there are three versions of the C note and there are two versions of the F note. So there's a lot of options. And what I ended up doing was finding the smoothest way to get through a major scale. Uh, my best guess at the smoothest way to get through the, the major scale. So, for example, when I play the F scale, I push the button in to get C. And then the B flat. So they're right next to each other and it's it's a smoother path than playing the C as a blow note and then playing the, the B flat as a draw note, for example. There are other scales um, that, that also take advantage of that. So in the, in the beginning of this video, I tried to make it the whole way through to the end. I've only succeeded in doing that without making any mistakes a couple of times. And uh, uh, on camera, I get, you know, there's an extra level of stress. So my, my goal is to be able to play these scales really fast to the metronome and embed those moves in my head so thoroughly that I've got a grounding in each scale that I can then move from there. Because jazz music theory is all built on the major scale. All of the scale degrees describe how a note is related to the major scale. The other scales are much easier to understand when you're firmly grounded in the major scale. So I've come up with other exercises that I've been doing that I have not yet translated to all the other scales. One of them is this one.
So once again, it's a work in progress. What I just did was I went up in thirds, one, three, five, seven, nine, and then came down on the scale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, starting on each note of the scale. And what that exercise does for you is you, you go through all sorts of chord formula variations based on the major scale. You go through the modes. You go through the ninth chord that lives in each of the different modes. You know, like D minor. So that was the... Uh, the D, uh, um, the Dorian scale going down, and a D minor ninth chord arpeggio going up. And these are the kind of exercises that I'm just continuing to hammer away on to give me a foundation. And I'm, you know, to be honest with you, when I first came up with this idea, I was staring at my 70th birthday coming up, and I was thinking to myself, yeah, right. Now's a nice time to decide you want to become a jazz musician. Yeah, right. You know, why didn't you think of this when you were 13 or 17? Or, you know, all that, you know, all, and that's all just bullshit, because the only thing that really matters is I'm continuing to learn. And... I'm continuing to get better as a musician. You know, Paul Simon had been writing hit songs for years and years. Uh, it was in his, somewhere in his midlife when he decided to go back to school and learn music theory and get a much deeper grounding in, in uh, music in general. And if you, if you follow his, path as a songwriter, you'll see later on in his life, he started writing some very sophisticated music. And that's what came out of his decision that he was not too old to start over again. Tina Turner rebooted herself as a rock and roll star at the age of 42. I mean, there's plenty of examples. And, and to me, the, the, the thing that really matters is if I want to have something in my life resembling an opening of possibilities and a feeling of youthful vitality. What is more youthful and opening up of possibilities than taking on a, a, a big learning project that will never end? And that's what it is for me. Um, so I'm going to give this one more shot and see what happens. Wish me luck. Oh, got to do it to the metronome. See, this is the other thing. is that I started getting pretty good at, at, at doing these scales. This is important. I, I worked on these for a while without the metronome, partially because I was working out the best possible way to do it. But then I ended up wasting time, losing time, by trying to speed up without the metronome. And the metronome is what keeps you honest because it doesn't matter if you're playing the right notes. If you don't deliver them on time, then it doesn't matter. So practicing the scale to the metronome gives you not just, it, it keeps you honest. It's like the part of the scale that you're not working right will stick out like a sore thumb. That's where your brain goes on. <laughs> And, and and you just start misfiring and it's pretty comical once I go off the rails uh, you know I just start stabbing the the button at, at totally inappropriate times and I was like what the hell's going through my head you know it's just like brain fritz so slowing it down trying it again uh, you know right now I've got 60 beats to the minute and Probably if I did this one note to the beat instead of two, I might be able to get the whole way through it.
See, that's what happens. Uh, now I'm going too slow, and I can't... And playing it real slow and playing it real fast, for me, are equally hard. So I'm going to go back to two notes to the beat. I got it that time I made it the whole way through that is I really recommend you figuring this out and making it a game if you want to play the chromatic as as a jazz instrument then um, just like a sax player like a, a, a student sax player one of the one of the first things that they do you know like first year uh, that's they start tackling the major scales until they can play them all once you can play them all then there's no telling where you can go with this. And that's why I keep hammering away at this. Um, and, you know, I'll be honest with you, I just burned up a whole lot of takes uh, filming this until I got to the point where I, I did what I just did. And even then, at the, at the very end, I kind of, you know, I kind of fluffed a little bit. There's, there's a, a Japanese Zen practice called enso circles you could look it up enso circles are this goal that uh practitioners will do with a like a brush usually and sumi ink and a white piece of paper and the goal is you dip the, the brush into the ink and your goal is to make a perfect circle and Nobody ever makes a perfect circle. There's there's some weird inconsistency in it somewhere, but they do it every single day. And 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 the and the goal is like even though you know you're never going to reach perfection, you keep trying. And that's kind of the way I feel about this this particular exercise. Is as I get better at it, I'm going to keep moving the goalposts. I'll keep going faster. You know, keep uh, try to do it faster and faster and faster. That's what Charlie Parker was doing with his his crazy, uh, you know, wood shedding, and um, it's 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 a fun, exciting journey. And uh, I'd I'd love to hear any of your comments on this process down below. Also, click the like button if you like this you know, this session that I'm doing and the ideas I'm throwing out. Fire away at questions. If you're interested in, in this process, let me know. If there's enough interest, I will tab out some of these exercises that I'm working on in the chromatic, and uh, maybe we'll get something going. So, anyhow, thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Hit the like button. You know, do all that kind of stuff. Help me get the word out. You know, I, I, I'd like to extend this conversation to people, anybody who's interested. So once again, Richard Slay, over and out. Thanks for listening.